Howdy folks and all the wonderful subscribers. It's me again, your chief marine mate, Edu. This is a continuation of the familiarization series for cargo control rooms of merchant vessels. Previously, we discussed the CCR of a liquefied petroleum gas carrier. This part 2 series is the cargo control room of a chemical tanker. Now, but before we start, thanks for watching. Kindly click the subscribe button, notification bell, and like it if it pleases you. Let's begin. Previously, as mentioned with the advent of new technology, cargo control rooms were first seen in the early 60s, and after which computers emerged later in the 80s in most major tanker, regardless of their type. And just like and just like most of the tankers, they have the same similarity when it comes to monitoring of liquid cargos, piping arrangement, bulk controls, remote start or stopping of pumps, and many other things like ballast system. This is the common uh, monitoring or uh, control system that you'll find on board these kind of vessels. However, they of course differ in operation sequence, operational sequence, procedure, applications, and types of uh, equipment that they are being uh, controlled. So as we go on, if you manage to see the part one series, then you will see some similarity but at the same time, you will find the new things or the layout will be a little bit different in most cases. Since we are talking now about chemical tankers and the first one series we talk about uh, liquid petroleum car cargos. The equipments are, they have the same terminology but the applications and its usage are different. So today, we are in the port of uh, Texas at Exxon Mobil Terminal where this lady is birthed. Birthed, uh, it's another terminology in tankers. In most cases, in some other ships, they call it uh, moored. And uh, pier, in tankers, we term it most of the time as uh, terminals or berth, B R T X. Uh, we'll talk about that in many other discussions. This lady is a chemical tanker of about 12,900 metric tons of depth, weight, and 18 stainless steel tanks. So as of now, we are still on the navigating bridge as of now and in most tanker, you will find a remote monitor also connected to the cargo control room. And of course, uh, this is to uh, give the uh, duty officer and of course the chief officer if he or she is on the bridge to be able to monitor what's going on as well. So uh, with no much farther, farther ado, let's go down and I will show you the control room. Follow me. So as of now, uh, we are exiting the navigation bridge and uh, going down the stairway till we get to the control room. So now we are on the uh, alley way uh, going to the CCR. The control room is uh, typically found on the main deck, uh, not uh, in line with the poop deck. Uh, it's basically the uh, first uh, visible uh, floor of the accommodation outside. So. We're just gonna peep through to the porthole or uh, window of the uh, CCR and now uh, we are looking at the uh, outside of the main deck. So this is basically our main deck and basically and you are looking out at the entirety of the uh, cargo areas, pipings and many other uh, related equipments for cargo operations. So that is actually where the cargo is uh, loaded or being unloaded. So okay, uh, we are now here in the cargo control room or the uh, so-called uh, control room for the chemical uh, tanker as I have shown you. So uh, you also see s the same monitors, N not all of course, but uh, some of the monitors that you'll find in here or you can see in here can be seen as well on, uh, on the bridge. So that's where we came from a while ago and uh, the reason for that is that uh, during an passage or on voyage uh, the vessel is sailing at sea in open waters or even in restricted uh, waters the chief officer or the duty officer uh, have a means of uh, monitoring uh, what's going on with the condition uh, or situation of the uh, cargo tanks one of those things like uh, for example if there's a uh, uh, gas leakage or uh, vapor leakage or uh, pressure um, uh, 
uh, not stabilize and uh, so many uh, factors like uh, even stability for, for especially for the chief officer uh, he or she can monitor the uh, stability uh, when it comes to stresses spending moments and uh, typical uh, trim and stability uh, information or data and this is uh, very important uh, for them to uh, know uh, at uh, all times see uh, from one point to another uh, when the vessel loads a cargo discharges a cargo especially when the ship is loaded it is very important that this uh, information should be monitored at all times all right now uh, i'm gonna uh, tour you around uh, with the different uh, as you can see in my background the control room uh, console and you'll be able to see a lot of uh, gizmos in there and likewise as i have mentioned earlier in uh, the part one series i won't be expounding or explaining much of the uh, usage and uh, application of the equipment so um, basically it's just again a familiarization and this will be a separate discussion as i have repeatedly uh, mentioned this uh, from the uh, past uh, videos that i have uh, uploaded so right now i'm gonna start familiarizing you with the uh, different uh, equipments and monitors and controls that you'll find in these uh, consoles of the CCR. Right, to start with, uh, you are looking at the, uh, on the rightmost corner, the uh, Pramo co uh, cargo pump uh, control. So as you can see, uh, there are 18 uh, designated or respective uh, controls for each tank. So as I mentioned earlier, we have 18 tanks all in all. So, it's uh, the Pramo, uh, pump, Pramo uh, FRAMO as you can see in the uh, uh, console, uh, I mean the title that I have put in there is uh, a very particular and very popular uh, common type of uh, pump system that you can find on board chemical tankers. Now this uh, may uh, a bit uh, differ from tankers such as the LPG or the liquefied natural gas carriers, they don't have Pramo, Pramo tanks in there. But when it comes to uh, liquid cargo for uh, oil tankers and chemical tankers, uh, Pramo, tank, uh, Pramo pump pumps are quite uh, familiar. So there you go. So in that uh, console, you will be able to control the uh, speed of the pump, starting the pump, stopping the pump, and many other things like uh, throttling uh, the uh, so the so-called uh, pressure discharge uh, output and even the uh, discharge or suction side uh, inlet uh, of the uh, pumps so basically you are controlling the uh, uh, flow rate as well it, it uh, behaves uh, in parallel with the flow rate uh, and pressure output of the uh, loading or unloading i'm sorry uh discharging of uh, yeah um i i mess up about that uh, when we are loading and then promo pumps are not uh, utilized and while you we are discharging as the word itself you need to have a pump to take it out but of course in chemical tankers uh, loading and discharging can be done simultaneously that's the difference in different uh, kind of tankers like the liquefied petroleum gases and the liquefied natural uh, gas cargos. It differs a bit because uh, you cannot do uh, uh, a parallel uh, loading and discharge in most uh, gas carriers. But in chemical tankers, it's quite uh, uh, normal or ordinary for them to do loading and simultaneously discharging at the same time. While uh, in uh, general uh, operations, they can do also just loading cargo and then of course after that they will do some discharging. Depending on the uh, clients that they have, or I mean like for example the charterers. So some charterers might have their different uh, uh, procedures for them or, uh, and or uh, cargo orders that to be done in a certain area or certain ports. Say, let's say for example, we are in Texas right now, we are loading and then we will transfer to another bird just uh, two miles away from here and then we will discharge that uh, other cargo that we have loaded 
in another form. While in some cases, uh, we might have as well a, a simultaneous uh, operation loading and discharging. And this is quite uh, uh, not, uh, uh, well, for, for most especially for, for, for the new ones, I mean the, the newly uh, boarded co uh, crew uh, who just been uh, assigned into a chemical tankers for the first time. And this is quite um, somewhat uh, stressful for them because uh, you know, loading and discharging at the same time or uh, you do loading from the other port and then discharge just an export up there in a few hours is quite exhausting but that is what chemical tanker does it always happen everywhere in most cases in every trade route that they do that's always the uh, similar uh, scene that you can find on board this kind of uh, ships right so uh, like I mentioned earlier that's a Prambo cargo pump control and uh, you can uh, control the pumps it's a variable speed opening and starting and stopping emergency stop as well etc and so on and so forth and many parameters that you can see with regards to Pramo pumps I'll be discussing uh, perhaps in the near future also about the operation of Pramo pump system and uh, this is quite a long discussion if I have to do it right now so you'll be able to see some diagrams and schematic uh, layout and then of course at the same time some maybe some animations that you will be able to see and its principle how it's being uh, the utilized or uh, uh, used on board the chemical tankers and other ships that uses this kind of pump so on the left uh, you'll be able to see as well that uh, we have a so-called uh, tank overfill alarm and high level alarm uh, that, that's the same thing almost as uh, you can find in any other ships like the liquefied petroleum gases and the liquefied natural gases because when you are loading you don't want your cargo to spill out outside of the tank and that is quite uh, a no-no if you are in the uh, any any ports uh, even especially in the u.s ports uh, you rather have a small spillage of oil than having a chemical liquid being uh, gone overboard and that's actually something that uh, they really uh, uh, it's a very serious matter for them so uh, now if you are to ask me have, have I experience and spillage uh, yes when I was a cadet but I was on board a uh, product carrier so we are carrying like uh, uh, this uh, premium uh, oil fuel oil and uh, it was a small uh, leakage actually uh, basically it's like just like uh, two liters of uh, of oil just uh, spilled out uh, actually it didn't spill out uh, uh, overflow from a tank it, it, it came out from a pipe that just burst for uh, oh because of over pressurizing and uh, the amount of uh, liquid uh, the day estimate was just like two liters it causes a sheen on the surface of the water and that's what makes it uh, I spill it still even a small spoon that is already considered as uh, pollu polluting the water and eventually you can have a lot of uh, issues with that right immediately uh, Coast Guard will come in uh, some of the uh, invest uh, investigating team from the Pre Federal Bureau and in most cases you will go to court nowadays so uh, we can talk about that a, a, a later uh, time but I was a cadet I, I was a cadet when I, I have experienced that right right the next uh, monitoring equipment that you'll find in this console is the so-called cargo tank pressure uh, monitoring uh, panel now uh, by the word itself uh, pressure gauges or pressure alarm uh, you have a so-called high pressure and we have a so-called low pressure and uh, we can turn this also as uh, yeah, low pressure as uh, a vacuum pressure negative pressure uh, is a vacuum while low pressure is still a positive pressure but it's very low now why why do we need to monitor this is quite important uh, when you have a high pressure and basically uh, the chances are it's that uh, one uh, is that uh, one of your uh, venting bulbs will open and then you will have a so-called uncontrolled venting of uh, vapors or gases uh, that will come out from the tanks and you don't want that to happen especially when you are alongside in a port 
you know you are talking about a chemical go uh, chemical cargo and that's quite <laughs> something that you don't want to happen now when it comes to low pressure you don't want that to happen as well um, because uh, if you are discharging and you just let the pressure go down until it becomes a negative pressure though they are they, they have this so-called interlocking system wherein it should uh, be able to uh, send a command into your pumps that uh, it will stop uh, automatically so that you will prevent a negative pressure in the tanks but uh, the idea of monitoring it is that you don't want that to get into that point because if something goes wrong like it didn't actually activate the uh, stoppage of the pump uh, or like the promo that I have mentioned earlier then you will have a negative pressure inside there are certain parameters that uh, has a limit uh, of pressures that will allow the integrity of the tank to be able to sustain it but uh, if that goes farther below then chances of damaging the tank especially the stainless tank will be high and <laughs> damaging a tank will cost a lot of uh, uh, money you know uh, you have delays then you have the, a cargo tank to be repaired or replaced and so on and so forth and it's like uh, uh, you don't want that those kind of things to happen uh, in that o operation so the same thing with high pressure so this is quite important uh, in most cases they are shown in uh, an analog or digital uh, display and this one as you are looking at right now are uh, they have this so-called uh, lights and it will uh, just give off an alarm a sound at the same time a light and it tells you if that tank particular tank has a low pressure or a high pressure and you can of course adjust the settings but you have to base it on the procedure and manual uh, arrangement manual of your vessel otherwise if you are trying to manipulate uh, manipulate settings then you might just uh, go into get into trouble so this is quite important on board other tankers like the lpg of course same thing the same principle applies we don't want to have a uh, over pressure pressurization because you don't want to bend off gases in the air uh, one of the uh, different uh, or in, in comparison with chemical is that with natural gases and LPGs uh, it's not that uh, uh, when it comes to toxicity it's not that as the same with chemical tankers so what we actually don't want to happen is that uh, these are flammable gases and then you might just caught into say for example there's a lightning ni nearby and uh, the uh, bend might get caught into a fire because of that uh, vapor uh, just bending out and uh, the other thing is that the vapor in an LPG is or an LNG is actually accounted for as a cargo because uh, a vapor or a gas can be turned into a liquid through a relic function uh, plan and it turns into a cargo again so we don't want that to happen as well so it's all, almost the same princ principle except that of course it differs in some degree right right the other equipment or um, monitoring system that we are gonna discuss about is the ballast tank control panel and just like any other ship you have the same uh, principles and layout uh, of course every ship has its own ballast tank system now uh, to give you a uh, just an overview uh, especially for the non maritime viewers a ballast tank actually is uh, uh, it's a water it's a seawater or a, or a brackish water or a mixture of fresh water and salt water now we are when we are talking about the uh, weight or uh, the cargo that loaded on board the ships you don't want to have a ballast tank uh, fulled, uh, fully um, uh, filled with water I mean to say because uh, your weight will be more and uh, that doesn't uh, meet the requirements of your stability so uh, when you are loading you are basically taking out concurrently or in parallel the ballast water and depends on the situation or how the stability of the vessel goes and when you are discharging you are of course doing the opposite for the ballast tank you are taking in water so uh, to replace the weight that you are removing from the vessel now of course depends on the location of the ship if you are in a port like in a river right now we are in texas in baytown we are inside the river so basically the ballast water we are taking in when we are discharging is from the river and it's a mixture of uh, we call it brackish water of course 
excuse me, the texture and color will be different because it's in inside of a river. If you are close just on the, along the coastline, then of course the water will be clearer. Now, of course, in uh, all circumstances when the vessel goes out to sea and it's fully loaded with ballast, you have to replace that ballast. It's part of the so-called ballast water treatment system and exchanges. It's a requirement under the regulations of SOLAS and with regards to marine pollution. Uh, the reason for that is that you don't want the ballast water to be discharged when you get into your loading port because that loading port is in a different place or different country for example. Now uh, technically you are actually um, changing the ecology system or environment of that area meaning to say you are uh, transporting or organisms or other uh, kind of bacteria that's coming from the fort that you have loaded your ballast water and if you discharge that ballast water into that port then it would uh, ruin or uh, change the ecology uh, of that system there are cases around the world wherein there's supposed to be there's supposed not to be uh, like for example this uh, you, you know this uh, food uh, muscle uh, m-u-s-s-e-l you know uh, there are areas in, in in the world that they don't have this and then suddenly it's just sprouted out out of uh, nowhere and then now it replaces the population instead of the, they have this many fish and other uh, species of fish in that area it was already overpopulated with muscles so now that that will ruin the ecology and of course the livelihood of those in that locality will be changed as well so they implemented the so-called ballast exchange water and they do it in most cases at open sea in where in the small cleaner uh, it's uh, you'll get a better uh, um, uh, clean water uh, out of the sea and that's something that you can actually now uh, be allowed to discharge and of course especially when the vessel uh, come alongside uh, there will be people or coming in uh, on board to inspect the water uh, content and they will do some inspection and put it into the lab so of course they would know if you did uh, ballast exchange of course they will check your records as well so again uh, as I mentioned earlier this is a balance ta tank control panel you can see bulbs you can see uh, control for your uh, pumps and so on and so forth of course it is a separate uh, pumping system for discharge and taking in of water and of course it has a separate and segregated tanks as well for, uh, uh, apart from the cargo so it's not included in the cargo system meaning to say they cannot be uh, a single uh, uh, integral part it has to be a separate tank or individual tank uh, from the cargo system All right th there will be some discussion about this in the future so yeah right the next uh, controlling equipment that uh, we are going to talk about is the uh, tank cleaning uh, controls so uh, of course in most uh, tankers uh, we have a uh, tank cleaning machines now that is a little bit different with liquefied natural gas and liquefied petroleum gas especially if they're just carrying propane and butane and methane so there is not this so-called tank cleaning machines that uh, is being fitted or utilized but in uh, crude carriers uh, or CPPs or clean petroleum products and especially in chemical tankers this kind of uh, so-called uh, tank cleaning systems are quite common right? as I mentioned earlier I think in the very first part of this discussion uh, or video uh, when a vessel uh, changes cargo from one port to another it has the tank has to be clean it has to be clean and in order uh, to be able to take in the next cargo especially if the cargo is not compatible with the previous one so there is the so-called compatibility checklist uh, the chief officer is uh, basically has to make sure that the cargo he's taking in is compatible uh, i mean to say uh, with regards to the so-called um, um, certificate of fitness it is uh, certain cargo is listed there what the vessel can carry but at the same time when in terms of uh, uh, changing cargos so say for example in your uh, common route or trade you are carrying uh, uh, say let's say an example of uh, cargo is uh, a palm oil a palm oil is of course uh, uh, 
can be carried in a chemical tanker. Then, of course, uh, from time to time, you have been doing uh, the same cargo uh, every now and then. And then suddenly, you have a loading order from your uh, charterer. And then they wanted you to carry uh, a sulfuric acid. Now, of course, if you put in or load the cargo immediately as soon as you get into port. And, uh, of course, in, in all formalities, there is an inspection. They have to do the so-called wall wash test. So they could uh, check if... Uh, the cargo has no other uh, residues or other uh, substance that is, has been left behind when you loaded the palm oil. But, and this is where the tank cleaning uh, machine gets into action. You have to clean the tank and prepare it in order to be able to take in the next cargo. Because that is not al allowed actually to load in another cargo when uh, uh, all the while you've been loading a different cargo and they are not compatible with each other. In fact, uh, loading a cargo in chemical tankers, there is the so-called segregation. And if this uh, cargo, for example, is you, you, lo you load it in, in one tank, and then uh, you load the other cargo uh, from the adjacent tank, and there is a, even a regulation or guidelines to follow. If that uh, adjacent tank where that different cargo is loaded, is uh, they are compatible with each other. Otherwise, it has to be uh, uh, in between another tank where uh, in between them uh, there is a, a compatible cargo and it's a kind of cargo that is loaded for each tank. So these are the uh, uh, a little bit complication when doing uh, cargo operations or cargo planning with chemical tankers. So again, tank cleaning machine, um, most cases in chemical tankers, they are fitted as uh, PIX uh, tank cleaning machine. Of course, some uh, cargos uh, like uh, some tank cleaning machines like in the clean petroleum products and crude uh, oil carrier, they have the so-called portable tank cleaning machines. So they could just open a, a manhole and they put in this uh, portable tank cleaning hoses. Now this can, this, this can be done as well in, 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 uh, in chemical tankers, but most they have the so-called PICS tank cleaning machines. And there will be also a discussion uh, regarding this. So anyway, uh, to continue, uh, let's go to the next uh, control uh, panels and uh, I'll uh, talk about the so-called gas monitoring equipment. Right, the next uh, monitoring equipment is the gas monitoring panel. Now, as the word implies, gas. I'll talk about uh, vapor and gas. In every uh, tanker ship, uh, especially, uh, even some ships, of course, they have the so-called gas monitoring equipment that uh, is uh, uh, one is portable and the other of course is a PIX uh, monitoring system meaning to say it has its own uh, sensor fitted in every species uh, around the ship it has its piping system that is capable of drawing uh, the atmosphere from that area and then analyzing it into a computer and then it displays you the values so this is a PIX system aside from the portable ones that uh, is being utilized. Now what is the purpose of this gas monitoring equipment? Now the purpose of this gas monitoring equipment is basically, as the word implies again, <laughs> it monitors the uh, level of gases or the presence of gas in a certain area. So when we talk of this uh, certain area, especially in the so-called hazardous dangerous zone, which is basically uh, beginning from the front of the accommodation uh, structure or superstructure and all throughout the main deck up to the uh, just behind the paxel area that is basically the uh, defined uh, zone of the dangerous area now in this area you'll find of course the cargo tanks you'll find the ballast tanks uh, some cover dumps and of course other uh, spaces of course like for example if you are in lpg and lng we have the so-called void spaces all right so uh, all these spaces has to be uh, monitored even the so-called, uh, if you have a pump room, if you are in crude oil tankers, uh, uh, some co conventional ships who have this pump room, uh, of course, uh, it has to be monitored as well with this uh, gas, uh, presence of gas. And the other thing is that, of course, in, um, in the ballast tanks as well, some has its own uh, gas monitoring equipment, not necessarily, but because it has to be done with the portable equipment. But so you don't want to have the sensors being uh, so-called uh, 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 exposed into a uh, water 
So basically, it is a uh, space that is actually, on most cases, dry. So these are the, like I mentioned earlier, the uh, spaces where there is no, no presence of cargo inside. Now uh, the atmosphere has to be monitored. One of course, it has, it is very important. For example, if your cargo is flammable cargo and for some reason there is a leakage from the cargo tanks and uh, for whatever reason it managed to get through uh, uh, it has an ingress of this uh, amount of liquid into that area or just the vapor itself so when that vapor goes into that spaces and for uh, some unfortunate uh, scenario let's say there is a source of ignition now let's say this uh, vapor is a flammable one then it may cause uh, an explosion or fire and that is one thing that you don't want to happen on board ships so basically if this uh, system is well uh, maintained and properly operated then it should be able to show you and notify you and gives you an alarm even the value and displace it accordingly and then of course you, you will know you will be alarmed and you will be notified of course there's a mimic uh, as a um, display of course that you can see on board in the navigating bridge it's the same thing it's not exactly the same thing as you can see in the cargo control room it's probably just uh, another screen wherein it shows uh, off the display and values and of course notification and alarms will be heard when the vessel is in the navigating uh, uh, area like of course in the open seas so there are different sensors uh, fitted uh, with this type now uh, this one of course uh, like I mentioned is a fitted uh, PIX, six, PIX uh, fitted uh, fittings uh, system so it's not portable you cannot carry it anywhere unlike those portable ones you can carry it uh, anywhere and the good thing is that this is actually it should run 24 hours 24 7 basis it's, it's round the clock uh, that actually monitors the uh, spaces at all times so it's quite um, important that this also has to be um, checked and of course calibrated from time to time and inspected as well and there is a service uh, uh, hours that uh, has to be required for this so that uh, all uh, of its sensors and its uh, uh, usage uh, will be um, for uh, will be able to meet these standards so again it's a gas monitoring of course helps a lot of um, things especially lives uh, yeah for example if there is a tank entry of course prior to that there is the so-called uh, tank entry permit and this is the so-called uh, certificate and of course this is this requirement that has to be filled out safety, safety meetings and testing prior to this uh, uh, tank entry so uh, even before that the this gas system is already working in place so um, there is this redundancy that uh, is always uh, take uh, taking in place so meaning to say uh, still but you don't have to be confident enough that this all already is uh, good enough for you that you can just enter uh, and close these spaces still you have to uh, use the so-called as uh, op for the tank entry procedure so again uh, as the word implies gas monitoring equipment right and the last uh, but not the least uh, monitoring equipment uh, that is fitted in the cargo control room is the so-called ODME or, or so-called oil discharge monitoring equipment panel now this oil discharge uh, monitoring equipment is quite important on board the tanker ship especially on uh, very large crude carrier or product carriers or any kind of tankers actually except for gas carriers we don't have a so-called ODME on board gas carriers unless otherwise if that ship is capable of carrying uh, other cargo like oil now uh, what is this is for of course as the word implies when there is this so-called uh, tank cleaning uh, in your uh, cargo tank especially for chemical tankers of course uh, you most of the time you use a lot of substance like water and this water mixes with the uh, remaining residues or content of the tanks and of course uh, once this uh, has been uh, cleanse you actually uh, uh, collect the uh, liquids that you have utilized in your tank cleaning and as an outcome this uh, liquid has to be contained into another containment system or a clean 
uh, tank uh, that would be able clean or dirty tank that would be able to contain this uh, cleaning uh, liquid that has been used in your uh, cleaning operation of tanks now of course as soon as the liquid settles the uh, substance like oil will separate from the water oh, yes so uh, in most cases the density of the oil is uh, lighter and the density of the water will be heavier so basically the oil is on top of the water now you can discharge of course the clean water if it's a clean water you can discharge it overboard under the regulations of uh, marine pollution and uh, that uh, under the regulations of the IBC code now uh, this has to be followed accordingly and of course the system uh, will be able to detect if there is a uh, discharge of oil that's taking place uh, or in the system meaning to say as soon as it detects a certain amount of uh, oil that passes through the uh, discharge valve to the sea it should be able to close immediately the outboard valve and then of course recirculate the liquids and it goes back to the containment tank and thereby you have already prevented the oil going out to the water and that's why it's called an oil discharge monitoring panel it's not it's not actually like you can discharge oil at sea no? and there is a certain regulation where wherever the vessel is uh, there is a so-called special areas and non-special areas and when you talk about uh, uh, discharging substance into the sea it's not because you are in open waters you can just discharge things right away no we have to follow regulations by the book by the laws uh, with regards to internal re international regulations and local regulations we have to apply that accordingly uh, whatever is the flag registry of the vessel this is uh, uh, something that has to be followed religiously on board ships so these are fitted and of course they are even uh, connected with the so-called GPS system or global positioning system and there is this recording device it's like a black box that would be able to uh, record uh, the operation of this ODME that's meaning to say if you are really doing some uh, bad intentions of you know uh, funny business of uh, trying to make a shortcut out of the system then you try to outsmart people or the regulations and it will be recorded accordingly and this will have a serious consequences so right uh, this is all about the cargo control room uh, there are of course other few small uh, items that you'll see in the monitors that I have shown and the whole console or area uh, you can always uh, put a comment in the uh, below and uh, let me know what are all the other things that you need to be familiarized with however as I mentioned uh, more than a dozen times that uh, when it comes to the equipment although I have given a bit of uh, explanation to some uh, there will be of course a separate discussion on each of these equipments say for example if we talk the ODME as a whole it's a big system actually there are a lot of components and equipments that are fitted it's not only located in the engine room uh, in the control room you are only actually looking at the monitoring system but in a bigger uh, pers perspective there are pumps pipelines bulbs sensors uh, that is actually scattered almost uh, in a big area so it's a it's a huge discussion so same thing with the rest of the equipments no uh, it's a big scope of discussion so we're gonna do it uh, one equipment at a time in uh, a particular ship so we will talk about the equipments that you'll find on board chemical uh, tankers we'll talk about uh, equipments that uh, is found on board uh, LPGs LNGs uh, uh, crude carriers uh, clean petroleum products uh, bulk carriers general cargo ship heavy lift uh, multi-purpose vessel uh, containers all of those things that we will tackle about every single small uh, piece or part of the ships that is utilized for uh, cargo operations or uh, other kind of uh, operations it will be discussed accordingly uh, but of course I cannot do that uh, in one go and at the same time I might not be able to discuss everything so uh, just put up a comment and uh, let me know and then I'll look through it if I'll be able to uh, give some time and uh, uh, make uh, another presentation so that uh, yeah, I hope it will be useful uh, in your profession and that you can utilize it 
the other hand again as i mentioned for the other viewers who are not non-maritime personnel then it's just another information that it may it, it may interest you uh, it's just additional uh, extra knowledge uh, that uh, especially if you say for example you are married to a seafarer and um, it, it's nice to know that uh, uh, the job that he or she is doing on board and somehow um, you can at uh, somehow at least uh, uh, fit into his or her shoes and uh, you, you will know the entirety and the whole story uh, how and what is seafaring is all about so it's a bigger perspective as I mentioned it's a bigger story uh, behind the scene so it's not like only in the pictures actually it seems to be easy to just tell these kind of things in a video but in uh, the real world uh, it's not exactly as it was uh, been laid out I mean to say there are of course many in between scenes and moments and events that is happening uh, around the club so right thank you very much thank you for time and uh, it's been a long discussion and lecture I hope you got uh, some uh, information uh, that is very important that you'll be able to learn from it have a nice day and um, I'll see you next time